Hi Bodine Bobcats! It's Miss Micah back here in our beautiful Bodine garden. The sun is shining bright and I'm so excited to share our lesson with you. We've learned a lot about how plants grow and survive. Plants also help people. They provide beauty, oxygen, and shade. But, of course, they also provide food through the harvest. To harvest means to pick the fruits and vegetables that are ready. Back in August, when we started the school year, many of the summer veggies were at the stage in their cycles where they were producing fruit and flowers. Then during September, they were finished with their life cycles and we harvested them. We picked veggies like tomatoes, peppers, okras, and squashes. By now, we've eaten the tomatoes, watermelon, peppers, okra, summer squash, and zucchini. But we still have winter squashes, garlic, sweet potatoes, onion, and apples. Now, we might not have grown all of these in our own garden here, but these grow in gardens around Oklahoma all the time. These warm season crops are special because they last a really long time. They can be stored in our homes over the winter without spoiling or even needing to be refrigerated. For this reason, they are called storage crops. Back before people had refrigerators and grocery stores, storage crops were so important because they meant people would not be hungry during the winter when food would not grow. Back when there were no refrigerators, harvesting a nice big butternut squash like this in late August would be a cause for great celebration because it would be something that could be stored to eat all the way into December. Celebrating harvest is a custom that people share all over the world. A cornucopia, or a horn of plenty, or basket of plenty, helps remind us of how special the harvest is. Thanksgiving is a good example of a celebration where we appreciate the harvest by making wonderful dishes out of crops storage crops like pumpkins, butternut squash, sweet potatoes, and even apples. During harvest celebrations, we give thanks for the many gifts from our gardens and farms. Here in our winter garden, I am in bed eight where we have three different kinds of root crops growing. We have carrots, turnips, and beets. Today, our turnips are ready to harvest, so I'm really excited to share this with you guys. These turnips are going to be so delicious, and I'm so glad that we got to put these together. Isn't it amazing that we can harvest awesome, fresh, healthy foods here in our garden? as late as December, when it's nice and chilly outside, I think it's awesome. You know, today here in Oklahoma, farmers are harvesting a tremendous amount of food, a lot more than we could harvest from our garden. Many of our farmers grow commodity crops. These are crops grown in large amounts that a farmer then sells to grocery stores and food makers. Oklahoma's yearly harvests are big. Every year, farmers harvest many crops, including approximately 140 million bushels of wheat, 46 million pounds of peanuts, and 621,000 tons of alfalfa hay, on top of many, many more crops. And ranchers also raise cattle, pigs, and chickens. While we grow a lot here in Oklahoma, the food that we eat travels from far away too, like as far away as California and Mexico. Food we eat often travels a long distance to get to our plates and requires the work of many people. Let's look at where food comes from that we enjoyed over Thanksgiving. Food miles 
refers to the distance that our food travels from farm to our tables. The more food miles there are, the more gasoline, money, and time is required to get the food to our plates. There are a lot of impacts that food miles have on the environment, such as increased fossil fuel emissions from all the cars and vehicles that are needed to deliver our foods that are grown far away and packaged in factories. You know, when we talk about where our food comes from that we eat every day, we're talking about something called the food system. The food system involves everything from planting seeds on a great big farm to shipping food on a truck that'll get to our grocery stores eventually. Then it'll end up on our dinner tables. That is the food system. At each step of the food system, people have jobs to do. These jobs are a, such an important part of our economy or how our money's made. The money that we pay for a carrot at the grocery store must pay many, many people, like the farmer who grew the carrot, the truck driver who shipped it, and the workers that picked it, washed it, packaged it, and sold the it. The food system steps include growing, harvesting and picking, processing like washing and packaging, transporting or shipping or driving, marketing or selling, and consuming, or my favorite part, eating. Do you guys remember earlier whenever I mentioned food miles? Well, food miles are the distance that food has to travel to us before we can put it in our bellies. So that means the lower the food miles are, the more benefits we're able to get from our food system. The food's fresher and healthier, like these super tasty fresh collard greens, because the quicker we eat the produce after it's picked, the more nutrition and good stuff it contains for our health. You know, I bet you guys can't guess how many food miles went into this harvest. I'll give you a second. Well, if you guessed zero miles, you're right. When a food system is local or in your area, that means the money spent on food goes to people who live closer to us in our community. And it makes our communities stronger. As we said earlier, the lower the food miles, the better for the environment too, because less fuel is burned in delivering the food. So you might be wondering, how can we reduce our food miles? Well, one thing we can do is grow our own gardens or we can buy our fruits and vegetables from local farmers by going to farmers markets so that we can get food that's grown just down the road from us. Here I am harvesting baby lettuce. Soon this bed will be full of bushy bushy lettuce and it'll be great for salads. You know, another really great way that we can reduce our food miles is to opt for foods that don't have to be packaged and processed. That means whenever you get to go to wherever you get your food, if fresh fruits and veggies are available, those are a good choice with low food miles. Here I'm harvesting side shoots of a big, beautiful broccoli plant. These are just tiny pieces of broccoli that came off of the main plant that we harvested a while ago. Fresh broccoli is my favorite. Now from this garden bed, we've already harvested early cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. You know, a third way that we can reduce our food miles is by eating in season. It's pretty cool out right now, and I know that crops that love cool weather are things like brassicas, like that broccoli I just harvested, or cauliflower or cabbages, or these really tasty onions. 
I am so excited to chop these up and add them to a soup for extra flavor. If we want to reduce our food miles with what we eat, we might be better off avoiding things like okra and watermelon right now because those would have to be brought in from pretty far away. Here I am in bed seven. I have lots of baby spinach plants that I'm excited to harvest. Spinach is so healthy and nutritious. I love mixing it in with the different fruits and veggies I eat by making salads. As gardeners, we can really keep our food miles down by eating the food we grow. In Oklahoma, or here in our garden, we keep our food miles down because we're fortunate to be able to grow food over the winter with a little protection from fabric and plastic row covers. Knowing the concepts of the food system and food miles helps us appreciate the harvests that we have right here in our own garden. In the backyard garden food system, gardeners plant their seeds, water them, and let them grow. Harvest and wash their produce, and then eat and share their yummy crops. There are zero food miles used when we harvest food from our own gardens. The activities for this lesson are all about exploring food systems and food miles. Thank you so much for learning with me. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye. Order in a cup of love, feel it rising up and above. You will always keep my heart and soul strong. Plant your seeds and watch them grow. The light will always know where to go. You will always keep my heart and soul strong. Look at how much our compost pile has shrunk. It's a great thing because it means that there's decomposition happening here. It's breaking down into compost that we can use to fertilize our food growing in the garden. Let me show you how it looks on the inside.